the famous horned dinosaur Triceratops was first named and described in 1889. Two years later, another horned dinosaur, Taurosaurus, was named based on specimens found in the same area as Triceratops and which lived at around the same time as Triceratops. But there is one primary difference between Triceratops and Taurosaurus. If you look at the frill of Triceratops, the bony frill at the back of the skull, you can see that it is short and solid. Uh, whereas if we look at specimens of Taurosaurus, the frill at the back of the skull is more expanded and there's big holes going through the parietal, the central bone of the frill. Right, studies of Triceratops growth have shown that as Triceratops grew up from a baby to an adult, it underwent a dramatic transformation. Triceratops is little, the horns above the eyes curve backwards, but as Triceratops grows older, the horns begin to incline forward. At the same time, there are spikes around the margin of the bony frill called epiossifications. When Triceratops is very little, the epiossifications are, are triangular and spiky, but as Triceratops matures, they become flattened onto the margin of the frill. So far, all known specimens of Taurosaurus have horns above the eyes which are inclined forwards and spikes around the frill which have become flattened onto the margin of the frill. Further studies of Triceratops growth have shown that as Triceratops matured, the shape of the frill at the back of the skull actually changed shape. And also two thin areas of bone began to develop in the parietal, the central bone of the frill. These thin areas of bone eventually are located in the same places where in Taurosaurus we find holes. If we look at the microstructure of the horns of Triceratops and Taurosaurus, we can also see changes taking place there. In the horn core of a young juvenile Triceratops, if we look at it under a microscope, we see that the bone looks very spongy. There's lots of openings in it. It's what very young, uh, rapidly growing bone looks like. But as Triceratops matures, circular structures called osteons begin to develop. Osteons are areas where cells have come in and eaten away bone, and then other cells have come in and deposited new bone. And this is how bone changes shape. So basically, the more of these circular osteons that you see, the more relatively mature that animal is. When we look at the microstructure of the horn core of a Taurosaurus specimen, we see osteons on top of osteons on top of osteons. This is what really mature bone looks like, and it looks even more mature than bone uh, in the horn cores of large Triceratops specimens. Based on this evidence, it's been hypothesized that perhaps instead of being a separate species of horned dinosaur, that Taurosaurus is instead just an old Triceratops. That is, as Triceratops grew up, its frill at the back of the skull expanded and eventually developed two holes in the parietal bone. In the Hell Creek Formation of eastern Montana, as you walk up through the hillsides, through the layers of rock, you're actually walking up through layers of time because the layers of rock that are at the bottom of the hills were deposited first. Those are the oldest layers of rock. And the layers of rock at the top of the hills, those are the youngest layers of rock. So as you go from the bottom to the top, you go from older to younger rocks. By far the most commonly recovered dinosaur in the Hell Creek Formation is the famous horned dinosaur, Triceratops. And by studying Triceratops at different levels of the Hell Creek Formation, it's been discovered that the shape of the skull of Triceratops actually changed over the course of the end of the Cretaceous period. One of the most noticeable changes is that when you are in the lower levels of the Hell Creek Formation, all the Triceratops you encounter have small horns above their noses, their nasal horns. In the upper layers of the Hell Creek Formation, all the Triceratops have large nasal horns. And as you go from the bottom of the Hell Creek Formation up to the top, nasal horns appear to become more and more elongate the higher you go. In this way, it may be possible to actually see how Triceratops evolved over the course of the end of the age of dinosaurs. The evolution of Triceratops may be an example of what's known as anagenesis, or transformational evolution. That is, you have one species which over time changes into a second species. This can be contrasted with what's called cladogenesis, which is evolution that incorporates some kind of branching or splitting event. So you have one species and then something happens and it splits into two species which evolve but can coexist at the same time. An example of this today might be lions and tigers which are closely related cats, but 
are alive at the same time, so we know that one of them did not evolve directly into the other one. There must have been some form of branching or splitting event at some point in the past. Continued fieldwork and research in the Hell Creek Formation will shed more light onto how Triceratops and other dinosaurs evolved.